Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Paul Phipps, Chief Information Officer and Corporate Vice President of Business Services of the Charmer Sunbelt Group and the Vice Chairman of ASUG Board of Directors. All right, good morning, everyone. We're off to a great start. We got the room almost filled, so that's a positive. You know, some of you may know this. Well, first of all, welcome to the annual Business Objects User Conference. Um, very, very excited to be here today. You know, some of you may know this, but for IT folks like us, today, September 9th, is an historic day. It was on this very day in 1947 that a team of computer scientists at Harvard discovered the first computer bug. The story goes like this. Grace Hopper and her team were running a test at Harvard with the Harvard Mark II computer. Guess what? They ran into a problem. And so they set about figuring out what that problem was and how they were going to fix it. Now this system, which relied on high-speed electromagnetic relays, was monolithic. It was eight feet high, 52 feet long. It weighed five tons and had more than 700,000 parts. You know what the problem was? A moth was stuck in there, blocking one of the relays. It turns out the first computer bug was actually a bug. Who knew? And just like us, very, very solid IT professionals across the board in this room, document every possible thing that has ever gone wrong with our own systems. In this case, Grace Hopper and her team actually and dutifully documented that bug and taped it into their log. And that log is now on display at the Smithsonian Museum of American History in Washington, DC, not far from where I work at the Charmer Sunbelt Group in Baltimore, Maryland. Now, Grace Hopper is, of course, famous for much more than finding the first computer bug. In fact, she was a pioneering computer scientist, and she paved the way for modern computer programming, and she was a brilliant mathematician. And nearly 40 years after that bug incident, she did an interview with 60 Minutes, Morley Safer. And in that interview, she told Morley that the country was, at that point, only at the Model T stage when it came to the computing revolution. Was she ever right? The first Harvard Mark computer could do three calculations a second. The HANA software we use at Charmer Sunbelt allows us to comb through two billion records of data and produce a report with 70 operational metrics in under a minute. But in all this time, one thing Hopper said has never changed. Take a look at this slide. We are flooding people with information. The processing of information is better, it's faster, and it's easier than even just a few years ago. But information continues to flood in. Remember, remember when the goal was a single version of the truth? Well, that's not good enough anymore. Today, business leaders need information from structured and unstructured data, from social media, from syndicated data, and numerous other data sources. And as we'll hear in the keynote from, from SAP's Christian Rodatis and Adam Benny, we need to deploy and use analytical tools to help us uncover the network of truth and what they're calling dark data. Now, it can be unstructured data or big data or dark data. You call it what you want. I call it a problem. And like most business problems, it's also a tremendous opportunity. And it's an opportunity for our collective community here at ASUC. You know, according to the State of the CIO survey in 2013, U.S. CIOs rank big data, analytics, and mobility projects as their top three priorities for the coming year. But only 13% of those surveyed had completed a big data project. That tells you how big the opportunity is. It's tremendous. And every operational leader that I know, from operations to C-level executives, are focused on gleaning more insight from that flood of information. Data is increasing at exponential levels. We all feel that. We feel that in our personal lives. We feel that in our professional lives. And companies need three things in order to glean insight from all of that information. They need that information to be useful. 
makes sense. They needed for it to be available and accessible. And they need to apply that human intelligence that Grace Hopper was referring to on that slide we just looked at. Companies that get this right are differentiating themselves across the globe. And this is also a point of differentiation for all of us here. You in this audience, your jobs intersect with every single one of those major project priorities identified by those CIOs. You have a tremendous opportunity to be at the forefront of what's going to make your organization different and better than your competitors. One way to do that is to present users with the right tools to give them access to all the data that they need in order to make the right decisions. We need strategies collectively. We've got to build those strategies to leverage the software we have in place today and how we're going to build for the future. Let me give you an example. At Chalmers Sunbelt, we are using HANA to help shed light on some of that data we've been discussing. You want to talk about bugs? We were one of the first SAP HANA ramp up customers, and it was painful. I mean, painful to be that early of an adopter. However, like they say, no pain, no gain. Today, with our HANA implementation, we are delivering real value and insights to our managers across the network. We have 40 <clears throat> real-time SLT connections feeding our HANA system to bring together data from different sources. We combine that with SAP data and deliver our operational benchmark report, which used to take three days to manually put together. Now, we can run it on demand in 40 seconds. Additionally, we leverage this information in real time to make operational decisions that drive productivity in all of our distribution centers. Now this year, I sent members of my team to this conference because I know we can't get the support we need to execute on these crucial business projects or get the quality and quantity of information to confront these challenges anywhere but ASUG. Simply put, success breeds success. We came to this conference for the knowledge on the bleeding edge products. Here at this conference, we have a handful of presentations from one of the largest business objects customers in the world, 3M. 3M is an early adopter of BI 4.1 through SAP's customer validation program, and they're gonna talk about some of the enhancements they've seen in that program, in that upgrade, in terms of mobilizing business intelligence and advancing their goal of self-service BI. We came to hear the strategies on how other customers are confronting constant change, and we'll hear, we'll hear that in presentations like that from NASA's Bob Maloney. He'll talk about NASA's dashboarding strategy to manage budgets amidst all the changes that federal institutions face today. And we came to collaborate on ideas for picking the right tools for our functional experts, something we'll hear about in sessions like the one delivered by Dallas Marks on analytic storytelling with Webby. And we came to listen for tips on strategies that will help position the tools we currently have for the future, something we'll hear about from Angela Alini of Deloitte as she talks about how they use Crystal Reports and SAP HANA to, manage, to, to drive business and manage compliance. Here, this week, we can get hands-on training in Business Objects Explorer, Lumera, and HANA. We can get advanced training in Web Intelligence, Crystal Reports, and Dashboarding. Practically the entire suite is covered at this conference. Now, year-round, the opportunity to learn and connect is perhaps better for this community than any other within ASUG. About 72% of our member companies run some form of business objects. And through July, the business intelligence communities and the business objects strategic SIG, and I hope there's many of you out there in the audience, presented 88 of the 208 ASUG webcasts held all year, nearly half on those topics. At annual conference, there were more than 100 customer-led sessions on business intelligence alone. These are just a few of the reasons that I'm a part of this community. And I volunteer because I believe in the power of collaboration, the exchange of ideas, and the influence a large group of customers can have with an innovative company like SAP. This is the power of ASUG's real experience and real advantage. You know, at CSG, we're relatively new to business objects. It came with that HANA implementation I was talking about. But we're not new to ASUG. 
In fact, we've been an ASOG member since 2003. And as a result of that membership, I felt a confidence diving into the technology knowing that fellow volunteers, like many of you, would help guide us around the pitfalls. Having thousands of people who have been there to tell you what to expect makes all the difference in helping your team climb that learning curve and be successful. And like Grace Hopper said back in 1983, that we were at the Model T stage in the computer revolution, and that there was plenty more innovation to come, I know we haven't seen the best yet in ASUG. And we're gonna run into bugs every now and then, just like they did. And we'll figure out collectively how to fix those and move forward. But I can assure you that we are poised for the future and that we have a passion and a purpose to be a huge success and fulfill our mission to make you and your businesses the same. On behalf of the ASUG Board of Directors and the headquarters staff, I want to personally thank all of you for being an integral part of the ASUG community, and I hope you have a tremendous conference experience this week. Now, speaking of passion, many of you may remember Adam Binney's Oscar-worthy performance as Doc Emmett Brown in last year's keynote installment of Back to the B.I. Future. Well, this year, he's got a new co-star, Christian Rodatus, and they're going to tackle the rise of dark data, a, network, a journey to the network of truth. That's great. <laughs> Everything we've been talking about this morning hinges on having a strong partnership with SAP, something that's demonstrated by the fact that every key member of BI and analytics team from SAP is here at this conference. And with that, we welcome Christian Rodatis in his debut, debut keynote as SVP of Global Analytics and Adam Benny, who leads market strategy and innovation for the BI suite. Gentlemen. Many years ago, a team of data scientists known as the Data Geeks worked feverishly day and night with primitive analytical tools to uncover answers and share their knowledge with others. As the business grew, so did the strength of the data geeks. Their skills were unmatched. They designed a series of one-way data bridges connecting people and data, forming a single version of truth. It worked for a while, but something began to stir in the dark corners of data. Data growth would soon become unstoppable, coming from all different types of sources. The business became paralyzed, and the data geeks were helpless against it. The world they once knew began to collapse, and chaos would ensue. A new enemy had emerged, the Lord of Dark Data. From the corners of the database, the dark data spread, crawling through structured and unstructured data, blurring the reality of what is and what was. But there was one called Lumira, with an idea that would change things forever, bringing data and people together to build a new bridge, a network of truth and take back insight once and for all. Lumira called out to those who were watching. She needed a team of data geek heroes to fight back against the Lord of Dark Data. It's time for a network of truth. Join the fight against dark data. Do you have what it takes? Good morning and welcome everybody. We certainly didn't bring any, any skateboards this year, but we, we brought the full Data Geek squad 
to show you how we will be able to fight the Lord of Dark Data. Thanks, Paul, for the nice welcome, and I couldn't agree more with what you said, and it will be a, a big theme as we, we talk how we really do the fight against dark data. I've only been on the job for a couple of weeks now, and I can't think of a better opportunity to be, to be with here, here with you all today and share our vision and strategy at SAP Analytics. Unfortunately, the Lord of Dark Data has struck again yesterday. Yesterday, a digital certificate did expire for web users, and I hope that everybody here in the audience got our communication. So there's patches out there available since Friday, and we should, we should be good moving forward. The team that all did this, so we've got Pam Ireland here and Shane Landry, they will be on site to help you with additional questions you might have. Let's come to the good stuff. So we've got about 1,000 people here at the conference, and the network opportunity is amazing. And I'm looking forward to learn from you. We've got about 22 partners showing their innovations based on our platform products at the show floor. Come and see them. Tomorrow morning, we've got Steve Lucas talking about the connected enterprise during his, uh, during his keynote. Following his keynote, you have the opportunity to meet with all the SAP analytics executives during the town hall meeting. We're doing a Q&A and panel discussion. And I've heard that the data mania exercise was starting last night, and some of the teams were working all night to get the best solutions out there. Most excited, I'm obviously about the Data Geek Challenge. We'll talk more about that in a, in a little while. Let's talk about the rise of dark data. So I've been in, in enterprise data warehousing and business uh, intelligence almost all of my career, uh, over 20 years. And I remember in, in the mid-90s, and that resonates very well what, what Paul just said, in the mid-90s we, we had a terabyte club. So a terabyte was a, was a terrifying size for a data warehouse. And the, only the largest com, uh, corporations in telecommunications and retail and, and financial services had such a big data warehouse. In the mid-2000s I worked with a customer that reached the first petabyte warehouse. And only a couple of years later, in 2009, that, that very customer was intended to store 25 months of web transaction history in the data warehouse, increasing the size of the data set to over 30 petabytes. It's reaching 100 petabytes as we speak. And that data growth is accelerating. Unstructured data is the main driver for that. Unstructured data grows approximately, or doubles approximately every 18 months. Gartner estimates that by 2020, we will produce 40x the data compared to only four years ago. And data silos are emerging everywhere in your organizations. At the same trend, we see, that we see a consumerization of, uh, we see the consumerization of IT in the analytics space. We need to reach new end users. Gartner, again, believes that today we've got approximately 10% that are analytics users in our organizations, and this will grow to 70% over the next couple of years. And it reaches out to consumers. We all are becoming analytics users at home while using financial services and other things. And Paul called it a problem, and I agree it's a problem. So the proliferation of dark data is a problem, but it's also an opportunity. It's an opportunity for completely new applications that will enrich the way how we will do our business. Let's look at those. So I've already uh, talked uh, about the web data, but there's a lot more of uh, dark data sources that we need to incorporate in our analytics efforts. If you look at web data, web log files, if you look at them uh, a couple of years ago, they were very, uh, very brief, and, and now they're so information rich that they can be pages long. Social media data is a gold mine for marketeers. They love it. They can measure consumer sentiment now. There's one area that I find absolutely fascinating. It's the prospects that arise from machine and sensor data. 
that is a highly untouched analytics opportunity. If you look at the four jet engines on a, on a Boeing 747 that crosses the Atlantic Ocean, it produces approximately 640 terabytes of sensor data. Companies are starting now to leverage the data. They use it to improve maintenance, maintenance efficiency. They work on optimizing their routes. Big thing. On the other hand, we have a massive proliferation of web-enabled devices. There's approximately 15 billion of those devices out there today. A huge thing that's coming up with location data. All this increases the complexity of modern analytics and how we need to deploy applications. All of you are challenged today to support a wide variety of business processes with different applications, and we need to ship those applications to any possible device. And everything has happened under the umbrella of the big data paradigm. And data applications and devices reach out beyond your organizations, to your suppliers, to your customers, to every consumer. There's huge potential and we can unlock a lot of value by connecting the information to the work we do every day. We can discover new insights, and we can act with the power of, of connected knowledge if you figure out how to do that. SAP's analytic solutions will help you to drive that transformation. We will provide you with real-time insights, and, and I think what Paul just, just said, and I, I remember very early how, he, how, uh, how his company struggled with the introduction of, of HANA in, in the early days. This was about one and a half years ago, two years ago, and, and I remember that, and, and now they're getting tremendous value out of that. We will help you to provide this real-time insight by connecting all users to all data, to all platform, and all devices. We want to spend uh, the rest of the presentation really talking about uh, our solution strategy, our roadmap, and we want to show you how you can unleash the power of collective insight. And this is what we're working towards to you. So moving forward, we are investing, innovating, and bringing solution to market in three categories. Number one, enterprise BI. In Enterprise BI, we are the undisputed market leader. Number two, about 18 months ago, we got into the agile visualization category. SAP Lumira was the first product, and there's way more to come moving forward. And the third category that we entered was late last year with SAP predictive analysis was the advanced analytics uh, category. And tomorrow, you will, will see some exciting announcements in that category. Let me talk about HANA. HANA really is our engine to provide real-time insight. And, and, and there's one, uh, one case, and this came out of, a, of an innovation project that we did with this, uh, with this customer, Bigpoint. Bigpoint, Bigpoint and is, is the company that delivers the Battlestar Galactica uh, game. Battlestar Galactica is an is a online game. Everybody can go out there and, and play it. It's, it's free. And, there's about 9 million users on, on that game, and, and they're playing, they're flying around uh, space and shooting at, at each other with their spaceship. And, and the compelling event uh, in that game for big point, not, obviously not for the user, for big point is when the user is getting shot down. So that very event creates upsell opportunity for big point. So this is when big point reaches out to the, to the gamer and offers offers them something, a better ship, better weapons, and so on and so forth, and charge them money for that. So that's, that's a business model. There's about 5,000 of these events occurring every second. So we build a solution for them based on HANA, on SAP predictive analysis, where we stream these events into, into HANA through co uh, complex event processing, compute predictive models on the fly by tapping back into, into a data warehouse with, uh, with user behavior history, uh, compute the model and feed a, offer, a real time offer management uh, solution that displays an offer to the gamer while the ship is still exploding. 
So I call this a decision in a second. It's absolutely fascinating. So if you haven't seen it yet, you should uh, go on our website and watch the video. Today, we've got such a broad and deep portfolio that we are able to help you to deploy any application to any user and to any device. We want to talk about that in a little bit more detail, and for, for that I need uh, the help of, of the data geeks. So I, I want to introduce the data geeks uh, to you now, and, and there's nobody better than Adam Binney to help me with that. Adam, please come on, on stage. Hi, Adam. <laughs> Thanks, Christian. So, so these are uh, our data geeks, right? And the data geeks are really here to, to help you fight the lord of dark data. So the one on the left here, the, the big guy, is, is the big data boss. So the, the big data boss mutated from a mysterious data explosion. And he smashes all the data together with ease, and he knows how to gain insight from a, uh, from a broad range of, of various data sources. And Adam will explain, uh, will explain to us now our enterprise BI solution category and lead us through the innovations that we just brought to the market with BI 4.1. Adam, over to you, please. Thanks, Christian. So I'm sure everybody in this room is very familiar with the category enterprise business intelligence. Enterprise business intelligence is about delivering lots of information to lots of people efficiently and reliably, making sure that everybody can get the information they need when they need it, where they need it, on whatever device. So if we go to the next slide, we need to talk a little bit about what that means for us at SAP. It means BI 4.1. We're very proud to announce that we've just gone to GA for BI 4.1, when again, we had an incredibly fast and successful ramp up, and the product is now generally available and available to download for everybody. And we really see BI 4.1 as the platform, as the version for every customer, all 40,000 plus of them, to start aggressively moving towards. We believe it's reliable, stable, and full of innovation. So what was it all about when we built 4.1? Well, it was about one suite for all your users, for all your insight. We wanted to create one, play, one, one suite that was connected together better and supported all the use cases that an organization has when delivering information to all the different kinds of people that we need to support in an enterprise looking to use information. We wanted it to be the one place for all your information. So we wanted it to support not just your SAP BW data, but any relational source, any OLAP source, and also now big data sources like Hadoop. And we've done that with BI 4.1. But we also wanted to continue to be the standard, the one standard for enterprise business intelligence that can be well managed, well organized, and trusted by your entire organization to provide that information when they need it and where they need it on any device. So that's very much what we're doing about BI 4.1. So if you want to go over to my laptop, so they asked me to do a demo of BI 4.1, and I said, well, okay, what do you want me to show? And they said, you'll show all the new stuff. And I'm like, well, do we have a couple of hours? So I, I had to pick one thing to do quickly. So I decided to pick one thing that really shows how we really created this one suite. And I'm going to go into, into one, of the, one of the tool set here, analysis for OLAP. So this is our dedicated OLAP solution, works on a wide range of OLAP sources. And what I've got is some airline data, because I was thinking everybody here probably flew in, unless you happen to live near Anaheim. And, um, and you know, how, how is the airport delays is an interesting thing. So I've got some data from the FAA. It's loaded up into an OLAP cube. And I can open this up in a view um, that I prepared earlier, uh, showing me uh, how I can analyze this information. And of course, this is analysis for OLAP, enhanced for BI 4.1. And I can do all the usual things here. I can sort some data. So I'm going to do a quick sort here, and I'm going to sort to see which, which of the airlines um, has the worst departure delay. So we can see it's going to sort here. We see departure delay, rank sort to show which airline. But of course, I, I'm coming to LA, so I wanted to just see Los Angeles. So right now, I'm looking at airlines for all of California. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drag in the airport. So I can filter on the airport here. It's going to pick an airport for me really quick, Lehigh International. It's not the one I want. So what I'm going to do is type Los Angeles or loss, do a search. Let's try it again with the star. All right, it's not going to work for me today. Maybe. I'm doing that wrong. All right, let's try again. Anyway, 
I can normally do this. I did this this morning. I think it's probably got a capital L. That's why. There it is. So just so I'm gonna, I'm gonna I have to unselect everything first. I'm having one of those mornings. L. Oh. Anyway, so let me get Los Angeles. So we can look at the performance in Los Angeles Airport here. And um, now again, I'm I'm using. Um, Analysis all up, I can slice, dice, I can go around. This actual application has got more than one view. It can show me the different airport information. And we can see here the performance by, on, on departure delay is Southwest Airlines. So that's just analysis for OLAP enhanced for BI 4.1. But there's one key feature I really wanted to show. If I wanted to share this information with Christian, what I'd want to do is to deliver it to him in a form that he could consume on his iPad. So to do that, I'm going to create a design studio application with one click, pretty much, from this application. So I'm going to take exactly this application. I'm simply going to click this dialog, select that I want to send it to an iPad, hit OK. And it's going to save a new uh, design studio application and put it in that folder. And I'm going to say this is going to be the SBOUC demo one. And save that as a new application. So it's actually created for me on the fly a design studio application, dashboarding application. It saved it up. To my, to my documents, so when I go into my SBOUC folder, I have that application, I can run it here. What I can also do is, of course, I can go in and I can put it in my mobile category, and it'll immediately show up on my mobile device. So there we go, I've saved that now. So I'm gonna go over to my iPad, so we can take the screen over to the iPad here. Let's hope that the iPad is working today. Oh, it is, good, okay. Just gonna refresh, gonna just refresh my iPad. Here we go, oh, it is there, okay. So I can press this button now, and it tells me that my server session is timed out. <laughs> it's one of those mornings, see? That's why I have to get off a plane and really late at night. Just log back out. Yes, yeah, I want to log out. I want to log in. Do it again. And yeah, we'll hit that button. This time it's going to work. So that's going to load up uh, a live design studio application. If you don't leave your iPad sitting around doing nothing for like three hours waiting for the session to start. Um, and it's going to show me that application and allow someone like Christian or another person in the organization to interact in a very simple UI designed for the mobile device so I can now swipe between the different views that I had in that same application. And of course, I can still interact. I can still filter, drill down, drill around, navigate, see different visualizations. So that's just one feature, just one feature of BI 4.1. And it really shows off how we've connected the different tools together to allow us to deliver that. And we can do this with Analysis OLAP, we can do it with Analysis Office, and we're working to make sure that all the tools work together so that we can create these beautiful collaborative experiences in the enterprise BI environment. So if we go back over to the slides and back over to you, Christian. Thank you, Adam, what a great demo. So, so and we've got customers that are using BI 4.1 uh, already, right? And, and Paul already mentioned 3M and uh, advertised their session, and I highly encourage you to, to visit this as, as well. And, and I want to mention them also for, for a very particular reason. So 3M is a very data-rich company, and they have made enterprise analytics one of their core pillars to roll out the business uh, strategy. And what I like about them, they innovate with us. They've been a, a very good business objects customers for 15 years. And they help us make our products better. So they rolled out BI 4.0 uh, last year uh, to 25,000 users as, as part of the mobile strategy. And now they have uh, migrated to BI 4.1 just recently as part of the ramp up program. And one of the, the core requirements for BI 4.1 really was, was quality. And we had a very successful ramp up program, and, uh, and, and 3M was one of the customers to help us make this very, very successful. And, and I'm not sure if Jeff Robinson is, is in the room here, but if he is, I, I really want to thank him and, and the team at 3M for being such a great customer and for being a customer that partners with us on new innovation. So thanks to 3M, and, and please go and, and see their show. The next one we've got is the visualizer. So the visualizer, she was really originally a graffiti artist. And she sees the world in a different light. She tells untold stories through beautiful and compelling visualizations. Adam will tell us now what we define as agile visualization and what the new features in Lumira will be.
Adam, over to you. Thanks, Christian. So enterprise business intelligence is about delivering consistent information to lots of people, but we still need the ability to find new insight and share that new insight with people. We need to be able to, to handle new data, new data sources, personal data, create amazing ways to, sh to, to find new insight, amazing ways to work with the data so that we can create new ways to explain that insight and visualize that insight, share that insight with people. And that's what agile visualization is all about. It's about providing an intuitive experience for people to explore data, search for and find new insight, for allowing them to work with data, to recognize that they may need to combine multiple bits of data together in new and interesting ways, to be able to create visualizations and to use visualizations to understand that information and then, of course, be able to share that with others and drive things forward. So on the next slide, for us at SAP, when we talk about agile visualization, for us very much that focuses on SAP Lumira. And SAP Lumira, we've been running about 18 months, and we're about, we're coming up for release 12 of SAP Lumira in a very few weeks. And I'm actually going to give you a preview of that today. And what we've been doing is we've been releasing Lumira on a very fast cycle, six to eight weeks between release cycles. And this is the next iteration of that. I mean, there's some really big things in this release. We've got a new user experience, cleaned up, tidied up, made prettier. And we're leveraging HTML5, which is a core technology at SAP, which means we get to leverage a lot of other things going on and things that our partners are doing for the whole portfolio. So I want to show off the new uh, Lumira. So we're going to switch over to look at the new SAP Lumira, Lumira 12. It will be coming out shortly. And I think there's some preview of versions available here at the conference. So we switch over to my laptop. We can go and look at Lumira. Now, hopefully, everyone in the room has already downloaded Lumira since it's free now. You can all download it for free from SAP saplumira.com. And here we're looking at the new version, version 12. We can see that the whole UI has been cleaned up. Now, again, we can still do all the amazing things we could always do before. We can create these beautiful visualizations. We can navigate and browse around data. So I wanted to go through the core functions here. The first thing is we want to be able to manipulate data. It's absolutely critical when we're trying to create new insight that we can work with the data itself, that we can change it, transform it, join it together. And in fact, this is the same data set that we were looking at before an analysis OLAP, but now brought down into Lumira so I can start to manipulate it. Now, you saw me struggle to find Los Angeles before. So let's see if I can struggle to find it again. Um, in this case, what we've got here is we've got the airport destination from the original data set. And it's this long name. It's the city name, and then it's the name of the airport. One of the things I might want to do very quickly on this data set is to break that apart and start to work with it. So I'm just going to show you again. We have this concept of data manipulation. So in this case, I'm just going to do a really simple operation like split. I can come down here, split on the colon in that string or any custom string, and it will create for me two new columns in my data set based on that transformation just split it into two new columns. I can do lots of complex things. I can update the name of something. I was trying to think on the way here if I could find a cool, funny name for an airport that I know well, and then I realized that I only have bad names for airports because I usually have horrible travel experiences. Um, but now I have these two columns that show me the airports. So I can still do all those kinds of operations. I can create new aggregations, new, new processes, and so on. So I can work with the data, an absolutely unique capability that Lumira really brings out and shows what's possible for people to do. We still have the core visualization capabilities. Here's a nice heat map. But I'm going to go use that new, one I did, that, new, um, that new data column I just used. So I've got a nice bar chart here. I'm going to go get my nice airport names that I just created. And I'm going to use those to create my charts. So there's airport destination three. I might give it a prettier name in the long term. And we were looking at departure delays and arrival delays. So let me go grab departure and arrival delays. And I've got the average delay on arrival here. And I've got the average delay on departure. And put that there. And again, we were sorting it descending so we can see where we were. So we can see here which airports have the worst delays. And in fact, what I can do now is I'm going to stack those together so I can see a stacked chart. So again, a very common kind of visualization. Show me a stacked bar chart by city, and I could, of course, now add filters like state, country, region, and so on. So I can save that visualization. And again, all things we've always been able to do in Lumira, but now using this new visualization frame with this new style. Now, how many people here use Lumira and spotted the fact that there's actually a fourth menu option at the top, a new option called Compose? And this is one of the big things coming in 12, is the ability not just to create a visualization and share it with people, but to be able to create an entire visual story and share it with people. So let's have a quick look at that. So I'm going to go over to the Compose tab. And of course, 
Everyone here probably who works with the mirror knows Manish Srinivasan. He, he prepared this for me earlier. So here I can see a nice layout of multiple visualizations and a navigation control that let me browse and maneuver around this information. Now this story today has just one page with a number of visualizations on it. And if I go this into view mode, I can, I can turn off that control. But while I'm in edit mode, I think it might be useful to go from just the flights canceled, I can now create a new board, so another page. And on this page, I'm going to take away the title. I don't think I want a, a title on the page. I'm going to turn the title off. And I can start to drag visualizations onto this page. So I'm going to put this visualization showing me some interaction between weather and flight cancels. We notice that snow days and shiny days seem to have about the same amount of cancels. So that whole thing about it being a weather delay is obviously made up. I'm going to get rid of the controls dialog here. And I'm going to pick up my visualization I just did and add that to the page. So now I've got two visualizations. And I want to have a little narrative that people can read about the fact that you know, we all know that the weather delays is complete myth are a myth, I'll put it in capitals, I spelt it wrong. And now when I, when I go back to the view mode now, what I have is that visualization is going to come up, and I can actually step between the different pages, and you see the nice little buttons down here showing me my navigation, so I can actually look at this on this page, and I can have as many pages as I want, so I've created an entire story with narrative that I can share with people, and when I go to the share tab now, of course, I can share the data that I've manipulated, Put it back in HANA, so it's a live data set that will constantly refresh. I can publish it to Explorer, so I can explore that data. I can publish the visualizations and the stories up to the cloud and share it with people. Or I can publish the data to Streamworks, so I can collaborate with people. Now today, SAP Lumira, as I mentioned, the personal edition of this product with the personal cloud edition is free to everybody on Earth. And you can go to sap.lumira.com, download it, and start to use this at home, whether it's on your phone bills or your uh, your credit card statements. I found that uh, creating a little chart showing shoe spending versus food spending is a useful tool in my household with communicating with the girlfriend. Uh, and I really wish you'd try it all as well. And if you find something cool about a way to explain how shoes seem too expensive, please put it in the Data Geek Challenge so I can use it myself. Back over to you, Christian. Thanks, Adam. So, thank you. So, so I think our development team is doing really a great job in advancing this, uh, this uh, product uh, rapidly, and, and there's certainly way more to come in, in the very near future. So and Sigma Aldrich is, is one of our early adopters of, of Lumira. It's a life sciences uh, and high-tech materials company, and they're serving about 1.4 million customers around the globe. And they have been a, a very broad user of our BI platform, and, and they were trying to roll out a self-service concept, a BI self-service concept. And they wanted uh, to enable the, the users to combine the corporate standard data that they source from the BI platform with the local, local data on, on the desktops and, and laptops, and uh, want to allow them to deploy applications very quickly and also realize visually engaging application that we've just seen here what Adam was demonstrating. So that's a great example of customers and how they really combine the power of Lumira with the assets they've got in their corporate BI standard on our platform. So thanks for being an early adopter and thanks for being a great customer. Now we're talking about the predictor. So the predictor used to be a renowned data scientist. The predictor creates algorithms that are so powerful that they can foresee the future before it actually happens. And Adam will now introduce our advanced analytics category and talk about our predictive analysis solution. Adam, all about you. Thanks, Christian. So advanced analytics, we, we talked about Enterprise BI, that fundamental foundation. We've talked about agile visualization, the empowering tool to allow people to create new insight, find new things in data. But again, we're still looking at the data we have. When we think about advanced analytics, we're starting to think about how do we take the data we have and create data we didn't have? How do we start to see the future, understand which customers are most valuable, work out who is at risk, be able to connect these things together and algorithmically determine what matters? And perhaps what's most important in advanced analytics today is that when we've done that, when we've created these models, we can apply them broadly. We can make them automate so that everybody can leverage them, not just a few people in a back office, but everybody in the organization should be able to leverage these predictive capabilities to gain new insight about the future. 
And finally, we want to be able to run those new insights, create those predictions, leverage them, and operationalize them in real time. That's what's key in an advanced analytics portfolio. And every organization has at least some of this. And they need to connect it together with the rest of their business intelligence to really deliver the maximum value. So we've been moving forward in this area again for about 18 months, really focused on how do we expand our advanced analytics. So if you go to the next slide. We've been really focused on a couple of key things in our analytics portfolio. First of all, that we have the amazing graphical tooling that is really well connected to everything else we do in the organization, which is why our predictive analysis tool leverages everything from SAP Lumira. So we can do all of that same data manipulation and visualization, but now we can add this incredibly powerful modeling and advanced analytics. We've wanted to make sure that we're leveraging the community that are creating an amazing diversity of algorithms. So we've really tried to uh, support R, and we have supported R all the way across the portfolio, so we can leverage thousands of people building new analytics all the time. So again, we've continued to focus on that. The second thing we've continued to focus on is making sure that we can operate algorithms we've developed on any kind of data, but we can also take those models and operate them in real time using our real-time platform, HANA. So that's what we've been driving around predictive analysis. So if we want to go over now, we can actually, I, when, I, when I, Christian said, well, can you do a big demo of predictive analysis? It's a bit like BI4. I, 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 give me an hour, I'm good. But uh, we don't have an hour. So what I thought was most useful, really, is to listen to an actual customer talking about how they actually use this technology every single day. So if we can run the video, we have a video from eBay talking about how they're using HANA and predictive to be incredibly successful eBay is a place that brings buyers and sellers together. We are working with a massive data set. It's more than 50 petabytes. Finding signal in that massive amount of data is hard. Having to separate those signals from the noise, which takes a lot of time. You only know a signal when it's different than the trend. This is very hard to do across thousands, tens of thousands of different variables. Finding that signal after a month, not so useful. Finding that signal so that we can do something with that signal, act on that signal, a day, now that becomes very interesting. So if we take men's collectible basketball sneakers, and we know that collectible sneakers from the last Olympics are selling really well, we want to tell our sellers that. That is the value of speed. So within the North American organization, we have more than 300 analysts studying the data day in, day out. So the current way of doing things is simply not sustainable. The HANA system will come into picture and help us do that. So the user just has to feed in their metric, doesn't have to really worry about which algorithm is the best to detect the signals in a given metric. At the same time, we'll be able to use this system because it's, it's inherently intelligent and configurable. So what's exciting to me about the speed of HANA is that Great people become exceptional at what they do because of the speed that they can interact with the data. That is truly awesome. That is where I think the world is headed. Signals is just the beginning though, and we've taken the first step on the journey towards that kind of advanced understanding of what's happening in the eBay economy. Thanks, Adam, and, and that's certainly a, a great story and a good use case example. And, and uh, we are really excited about the, about the predictive solution category. And I've even brought you a second example so, here. So, so this is CIR Foods in, in Italy. And that, that's a pretty interesting business. They're a food services and catering company. And they, they produce meal and, and ship them to 33,000 customers in, in public sector and in private businesses. And they produce over 75 million meals a year. That's quite a lot. And the biggest concern in their, in their business really is accurately forecasting the demand to reduce waste, waste. So every percentage point of waste that they can, they can improve on is, is worth big money and, and cost savings for them. So they're using our SAP predictive analysis solution to engage in this optimized demand planning process based on analysis of their ordering and seasonality data. And they had a, a tremendous success with this product. 
product. So they, they had a, a payback in no time. So they achieved 3,000% ROI on this initial project uh, immediately after they deployed it. And that is really a great example to show again what the predictor can do for all of you. Now we've got the sidekick. So the sidekick trains with Lumira side by side. The sidekick has developed new data tactics to help shed light on dark data. And it's all about partnering and our ecosystem. We can't do it all alone. And I can confidently say that we've got the best ecosystem and the best partners out there in the industry. We have an open and agnostic solutions portfolio. Partners can plug into that and deploy their own innovations. The event here is a great example. We've got over 100 partners present. You should socialize and, and, and network with them and see what they're develop, developing and what innovations they bring to market. About two years ago, a little bit less than two years ago, we introduced a startup program. So initially that was HANA focused, but it turned out that most of the startups, and there's over 450 of them now, are developing analytic applications. So 450 startups now are leveraging our database and analytics platform products to innovate. It's a great success. That's a global program. It's not in the Bay Area or anywhere. They're, they're everywhere. And they target mostly analytic solutions in every industry that you can imagine. There's a couple here. Next Vision X is one example. I've been on, on stage with them uh, at, at Sapphire, and, and they are innovating in, in the retail space, and they're leveraging the BI 4.1 platform in order to do so. Great example. And Adam brought us uh, another one. So he, he was working with Wipro, and they really came up with a cool solution, and Adam is going to show, out, uh, show us what Wipro has innovated. So I talked earlier on about the idea of having visual extensions, be able to create whatever visualizations we need in our agile visualization solutions. But for visualization specifically, we've always had an ecosystem of people creating beautiful visualizations around dashboards. And that community is now moving over to also bring those same visualization capabilities to design studio. And in fact, one of those, one of those key partners, a company called Graphimate, who do um, Dr. Highchurch style charting, are actually now about to deliver to our e-store those plugins for those technologies. But I want to talk a little bit about Wipro. Uh, Wipro got involved in the early days of the, uh, the SDKs we were creating for our visualizations. And they've created some visualizations bespoke ones for a specific industry. They've been working with the telecom industry. And if we could flip over to my laptop, they sent me some, some very basic telecom data. Um, they, they were asked to create some very specific visualizations for telecom. So here's my telecom data. It showed me how many customers I have by region. I could do a heat map on a chart and stuff. But the reality is in the, in the telecom industry, they're really interested in a couple of very specific charts. And one of those is called a loyalty chart. So if I go down here, we can see that what I've done is I've installed the Wipro extension. It's very easy to do. So you download them, you add them to Lumira as extensions, and they show up as new visualizations. And I have one here called the loyalty chart, which is a specific type of chart. And when I select loyalty chart here, it asks me for some data. I'm going to take that out. And I can just put my how long has the customer been a customer, which is the time period, and where are they. And what I will get is this beautiful chart showing me what life cycle of the customer are they most loyal, do we mostly lose customers and gain customers in a very specific visualization. As part of that same telecom package, they're also offering a sunburst chart, which allows you to use these radial charts to see different information. So it allows you to add these custom charts. And in fact, you can now go out and ask a third party or have your own developers create brand new visualizations, any visualization that your imagination can come up with, and deliver it for your organization, or obviously sell it through our stores to all the other organizations. So we're going to do the same thing outside visualization. We're going to do it for advanced analytics. We're going to do it for um, any, any aspect of the product we can think of. Because we believe that a healthy ecosystem, like the sidekick, can help the team, all of you, be more successful. So back over to you, Christian. Thank you very much, Adam. So now we've got our last one. So it's the last data geek is the prodigy. So the prodigy helps us to look into the future. So one superpower once said, with great power comes great responsibility. So the prodigy helps us to uncover new insights for future civilizations. The prodigy helps to tap into the minds of the future and help us 
see the new product innovations that need to come. Adam will share us a little bit what's in our pipeline and how we will move our innovations ahead. So over back to, to you and reveal for us what the prodigy envisions for the future of BI at SAP Analytics. So a bit like all the other times, Adam, just show all the new innovations uh, in two minutes. That's it? So uh, that's not possible. So there are, there are so many things going on. But I decided that you know, thinking about what we've been talking about today, real time, um, real time platform, agile visualization, and so on, I wanted to go in this area just to talk about how we're innovating across the entire portfolio. We've shown some innovation in Analysis OLAP. We've shown innovation, obviously, in Lumira. We've got innovation happening across the entire portfolio. And I wanted to focus a little bit on that real time. Now, most of us can all think of a very simple real time scenario. We all track stocks every day. So if we switch to the laptop, um, we quickly mocked up an interesting application. The technology that was talked about earlier on, I think it was talked about um, by Sunbelt Chambers, ESP, our event stream processing technology. What we've got an innovation that's about to be delivered, it'll be delivered as a free extension to dashboards to allow you to connect your dashboards to ESP and do real time stuff. So we just created a very simple demonstration here showing real-time stock monitoring. And all we did is we tricked, we've, uh, we just recorded some stock price changes on the stock market, tick prices for v various stocks. Microsoft, Oracle, IBM, and eBay, we put a portfolio in here, and we're allowing the thing to re basically replay those stock prices and actually see the trend and exposure and value in the portfolio in real time. Now, this is a stock environment. And again, being, in, being a dashboard, I can interact with it, of course. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to change this. I'm going to add a new symbol. And I'm going to set the price to be 120, which I think is roughly, roughly right. And let's say I'm going to buy a lot. I won't let me buy that much. All right. Let's just buy as much as it will let me. And what we can do now is you see it's added another stock. It's got a whole, all the history. So it's actually got all the different stock prices. And it's going to start to continue to start picking up SAP in a second. Now, what this means is that we can take any streaming feed of real time data and we can add it into the environment and we can deliver it in dashboards to people in real time. Now, again, Stock market data is, uh, at some level, rather, uh, it's OK. It's kind of cool if you're in the financial services industry. But imagine being able to apply this technology to your operations center, being able to apply this to all that machine data that Christian talked about that we're using to monitor who's coming into and out of our retail locations, what the queue length is at a restaurant or at a, at a, at a checkout, or how much ore is moving down a, a railway line, or how many of your conveyor belts in, your, in, in, a, in a, a production facility are actually operating at a peak efficiency. Any of those use cases can be delivered now with ESP and leveraging dashboards to visualize quickly and beautifully that information in real time. So this is just one of the innovations coming down the pipe. I thought it was a really cool one. If anyone wants to find out how this works later on, come by and see me. Back to you, Christian. Thanks, Adam. That, that was amazing. So Adam, when will this become available to the, to the audience here? Um, it'll be, it'll, it'll be, we're, we're in that sort of last stage of testing right now, so we're thinking in a few weeks. And it's going to be, as I said, available on the web store, just download as a sample or extension, as a free extension to SAP dashboards. Very cool. Adam, thank you for all your help. Thank you. So, so I think uh, over the, the course of the last 45, 50 minutes, we've seen what the Data Geek Squad can do for you. And I've got a, the, the next thing that, that I really want is that you all become superheroes, establish your own data, and you leverage the Data Geek Squad, and go out and take up the fight against the Lord of Dark Data. And there's a couple of, uh, of recommendations that I've got for you. And we, we, we already discussed those uh, partly. So number one, in, in Enterprise BI, 4.1 is ready now. It's a very robust high quality release, and you should upgrade to it now. And yesterday, uh, we, we met at the Influencer uh, Summit here. So as I understood that uh, only two years ago, or so the SAP people had to wait outside the room, and we were only called in later. And yesterday, we were actually part of the meeting uh, right away. And one of the things come up is the, the, the people, the team said, we can't find anything on, on your websites, right? We, we don't know how to find things, and we are confused by the service offerings, and we don't know how to configure it, and so on and so forth. So there's good news for you now. We've got a website for Enterprise BI now. It went live, Pam, today? Right away. 
So it's called sapbusinessobjectsbi.com. It has everything for you you want to know about enterprise BI. Customer stories, uh, migration and upgrade path, uh, help that is required. There's a community here, here where you can exchange views with other customers and so on and so forth. So I highly recommend visit, visit that website, sapbusinessobjectsbi.com, live today. Great stuff. Second, uh, Adam has already mentioned it, uh, SAP Lumira was made free a couple of weeks ago, so there's a personal edition that you can download. Go to sap.com Lumira, try Lumira, is, isn't it? Do, don't we have saplumira.com as well? saplumira.com actually is, is easier than this one, so I highly recommend you download Lumira today and start working on it. In another free product, so SAP Predictive Analysis, a trial version is free as well, so you can go to sap.com predictive, download that, and start your, start your journey in advanced analytics. So there's a, there's a lot of cool stuff coming, there's a lot of cool stuff already there, and we highly encourage you to try out our new solutions and embed those in your existing BI architecture. And then we've got the Data Geek Challenge, right? And I, I, what, I, what I've heard is, so there's, there's one entry by Timo Elliott. He's somewhere here in the audience. I, I can't see him. And, and he's the one to beat, right? So get registered, visit the SAP booth, enter the Data Geek Challenge, and I think it runs uh, towards the end of the year. You'll get a, you, you will receive one of those fancy T-shirts that I'm, that, that I'm wearing. Become a superhero and beat Timo Elliott. And with that, I thank you for your time and wish you a very successful conference. Thank you.